containers, containers, containers. Nowadays, you see containers everywhere you look. Let's see how we can optimize continuous deployment of containers in a multi-environment scenario. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coder Day. Thank you very much for joining me today. I've already talked about containers and containers images in our previous video, where I explain um, how I like to do continuous integration for containers images and why I think the method you find in most of the blog posts and examples is not the optimal one when it comes to CI. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, you have the link in the description below. In today's video, I will instead focus more on deployment of containers, especially on continuous deployment. So using a server like Jenkins or Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions, for example, and how we can optimize the process of the continuous deployment. Let's start with some theory. Let's start talking about how a multi-environment scenario look like and why it's adopted. Having multiple environments, it's fairly common. And especially in the enterprise, but not only, you end up having different container registry for each environment. In this example, we have three environments, dev, UAT, and production. And in each one, we have a container registry. Now, I'm not suggesting this is a best practice or not. I leave that to you. But this is what I see very often, especially in enterprise customers or anyway in customers or, or scenarios where you want to have complete separation between environments, including the container registry. In a scenario like this, what happens is that you will have your CI with your build engine creating for you the container image. And then the same CI will need to push it to the development container registry. The reason for this is that that container image is existing just during your CI. You don't save it anywhere. And the only way to save it is to push that to the development container registry or to an intermediate container registry. Then when you want to go to UAT, your CD process will come into the picture and will need to pull the container image from the development container registry and then re-push it to UAT. And same thing when you want to go to production, you'll have to pull it from the UAT container registry and finally push it to production. Even though I've seen this process implemented many, many times, I don't really like it. First of all, I don't like it because there's a tight dependency between container registry. For example, let's say that the development environment ACR is not available for some reason. Then you will not be able to move to UAT because your CD process will not be able to pull the image from development. And same thing for production, of course. Another thing I don't like is that you have to manually take care of your container images. What I mean is that you want, of course, to be sure to pull from the development or from UAT the correct image version you want to push to the next environment. Now, how you do that? Of course, if you use the latest as a tag to the image, you will not be able to ensure that you're pushing the right image because that may have changed in a, in a different stage. If instead you use a static tag for your images, then you will need to save that information somewhere. So the version one, two, three of your CI will reflect in the version one, two, three of your CD. And that is easier in some systems like Azure DevOps, for example, is not that easy in other systems. And yet another reason why I don't like this is that I want my CI to be CI only and my CD to be CD. In other words, I want my CI to take care of the build and compilation, and I want my CD to take care of the deployment. For me, pushing an image to a container registry should not be part of a build, but rather part of a deployment. And this is why I said I want them to be doing their job. 
I want to be deploying during a CD phase. So how we can make this better? How we can optimize it? Taking in consideration all I just said, this is how I like to do CI CD of my containers. Of course, I left the same CI and build aging as before, creating my container image. But instead of pushing my image to the container registry inside the CI, what I do is I create a build artifact. If you're not familiar with build artifacts, those are uh, some kind of construct that almost all CI system have, which you can create as part of your CI. And basically they are the result of the CI itself. And they are normally stored either in a external file storage or the way I prefer it inside the CI system itself. Either way, build artifacts are completely immutable, which means that once you create one, that will stay the same forever. And uh, for example, in Azure DevOps, artifacts are very easily shared with CD. In fact, the CD process will be able to consume the artifact directly with no configuration required and take care of them. Once I have my build artifact, my CD process will take care of that, taking the artifact and pushing it to the development ACR. When I'm ready to go to UAT, then the same artifact will be pushed to the UAT. And once again, that will be pushed to production. As you can see here immediately, there is no dependency between container registry. So in the same example I said before, if my development registry is down, I can still go to UAT or to production because I'm not pulling it from another container registry. I just have the image inside the build artifact directly in my CD process. So in any time, I can just take it and push it to another container registry. And I don't have to take care of the container version myself or the container tag myself because that build artifact will be immutable for the whole iteration of C continuous deployment, which means that I don't have to save anywhere that information, but automatically, whenever I'm ready to go to the next environment, the exact same image will be taken and pushed to the relative container registry. So as you can see, this solved all the three uh, you know, points I had before. CI is doing just CI and CD is doing just CD. There is no dependency between container registry. And I have the absolute certainty that the same image is deployed to the different environment. Now that I have explained the process on the slides, let's see how to implement that in Azure DevOps using Azure Pipelines. We are in Azure Pipelines now, and in this project, I create a container image for a .NET Core solution. And what I do after the build, and the build of the image stops here, instead of pushing it to a container registry, as I explained before, I'm just saving it in a tar format, and then use that file as a build artifact. For saving it as a tar, the only thing I have to do is using the save command from the Docker command line and passing it some output. In my case, I have a variable that defines the image name and I'm using the build ID as a tag. So all I have to do is telling Docker to save the image with this name. The .image.tar is something that I like to add, but can be anything. And in the publish artifact, I'm just picking up the whole content of the artifact staging directory that in this case will only be the tar file. If you're curious to know what the docker save command does, we can check on the docker documentation and what it say is that it produces a tar repository that contains all the layers and tags and version of the image. So basically what it does is taking the image we produce in the CI and packing everything into a tar file. Then let's go to the release pipeline.
In here, I have the three environments as we've seen before, dev, UAT, and production. And let's dig into dev, for example. What I'm doing in here is just loading the image from the tire, again, with the Docker command, and change the name or basically retag the image. And this is necessary not only in dev, but also in the other environments, because when you push an image to a container registry, that image need to contain the name of the container registry in its own tag. Finally, here is when I'm pushing that image to the container registry. In my case, I have to do nothing else here because I'm using Azure Container Instances and then they will pick up the latest image I push um, automatically when they run. In your case, if you don't use Azure Container Instances, you may have here some deployment to Kubernetes or whatever other uh, you know, container orchestrator you use. Again, just taking a look at what the docker load command does, it just loads an image or a repo from a tar archive, which basically means that it will take the tar file we produce in the build and it will unpack it, uncompress it, and load the image, all the layers, versions, and tags into our registry. If you're curious to see how to actually do this, for loading the image from the tar, we use the load command and we pass these um, arguments. And the system.default working directory is where the pipeline actually stores or takes the artifact. This is the name of the artifact itself and this is the name of the tar file. Then for retagging it, once again, another CLI command from Docker is the tag command, and we just pass the actual name with the new name containing the container registry. As you can see, in my case, everything is a variable, the image name, the container registry name, etc. because I want to have this as much as automated as possible, as much as you know reusable as possible. So I try to uh, put variables everywhere I can. One thing we haven't seen yet is where does this tar come from? We have actually seen before we create this tar file as a last step of our CI definition. But how is that made available to our release pipeline? To see this, let's go back to the pipeline definition. And we've seen here we have an artifact section. If I click on that, this is where the magic happens. You can see here that this release definition depends on this artifact, which is the produce of this build. In this case, I'm always taking the latest version. And the latest field here is where you can change the name of the artifact to be reused in your pipeline. If you remember before, I had this name as artifact when I was doing the load of my image. As you would expect, this is exactly the same across the different environments. And we can also see that if I go here, the steps are the same. I'm loading from the tire, I'm retagging the image, and I'm pushing it to the correct ACR. That's it. Nothing else to do. The only thing I have to do is remember to you know load it from the tire, change its name, and push it. All right. I guess this is it for today. You can read the full explanation of this technique in my blog. The link is in the video description. What do you think? How do you do continuous deployment for your containers? Please let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today, and see you soon at Carter Dave.